going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds i'm so sorry we missed all the walk arounds last week for those of you that enjoy the walk arounds believe me i heard you loud and clear and some of you said hey you didn't miss it at all it was a nice break well i kind of agree with both of you it was a nice break for me and now we got to get back to it i had a family emergency last week that's all taken care of now so we are back to do our weekly copart walk arounds and we're going to start this one off with an audi a5 premium this one is a 2018 audi a5 premium with some significant hail damage guys it's a beautiful car it's a rag top so you don't have to worry about hail damage on the roof but as you can see hail damage all over the hood the windshield is totally taken out 41,000 miles you've got hail damage all through here hail damage all across the back as well and hail damage all across this side. This is actually kind of rare for me. It's kind of rare that I see hail damage on both sides. Normally it's the top and one side, but this one, this one somehow managed to catch hail damage everywhere, all the way around. Um, yeah, so it's a wrap. And the hail damage is significant. I mean, this isn't just a little bit of hail. It's got severe hail damage all the way around. Just take a look at that windshield. I mean, it is, it's it's done. Now there is a saving grace to this, I, 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 I guess. That is, the majority of the damage is going to be on the hood. Okay, the hood comes all the way over to the fender line here. This is a huge saving grace because you replace the hood and you have just knocked out probably 40% of the hail damage. All right, the hood reaches all the way over here. Now, you've got some hail dings on this fender. Those, I would PDR all day long. PDR those. Replace the entire hood. I doubt you can PDR this. I guess you could try. I probably wouldn't focus on this too much. Windshield, hood, PDR this fender. Moving over to the door, there's quite a bit of hail dings there. I think what I would do on this is focus on the biggest dings and leave the tiny ones it's not going to be so noticeable okay pdr that as well the quarter there's a lot of dings here guys there's quite a bit but again i would focus on the really big ones the really noticeable ones i would take care of that probably the same thing with this trunk lid is the worst okay on top of uh, as well as the hood replace this as well and then PDR these sections over here as best you can. That's where, I, that's where I'm at with it. That's what I would do. Now, you guys comment below and tell me what you would do. But for me, it's not that big of a deal, man. Replace the hood, replace the trunk, and have somebody PDR the worst dents along the quarter panels and uh, call it a day. If you're lucky, find one the same color. I would wait. Even if it took me six months, I would wait to find the same color code as this car to uh to replace the trunk and the hood parts aren't going to be particularly cheap for this but uh i mean they're not gonna they're not gonna rake you over the coals or anything too bad either a5 quattro push to start oh uh, no we can't be doing that now yeah well it would be nice if i could figure out how to turn the damn volume down Anyway, <laughs> all right, now that I figured out how to shut the damn radio off, it does come with both clickers, which is nice. We'll pop the hood. I'm sure it's just a little, a little four banger under there. What do you think, a turbo four? I don't know. I don't know. This is nice, though. It's a nice little car. And it's slick as hell, too. I got to give Audi credit, man. Even, even their base model cars just look super sick, man. They, they... You can tell they really they really work to make sure when you see their cars, you're impressed by them, you know what I mean? Now, if the hood would open, there we go, that would be nice. Yep, it's a four banger. And it's a turbo. Well, everything under here looks good, as well it should. It's only got 40 some thousand miles on it, guys. She purrs like a kitten. This is nice. This is real nice. I like these headlights too, boy. I'm glad the headlights didn't get damaged because let me tell you something. Those headlights are probably pretty damn expensive. 
I, I just, I love the LED strips on them. Man, Audi, you make some sick looking cars, guys. And it's a Quattro. It is a Quattro, all wheel drive. We'll take a look in the trunk real quick. Well, hell, I could have known what was in it. it says it right here, 2.0 Quattro. I'm out of practice, man. That's what it is. What is this? What is that? What the heck is this? Some kind of cover for the back seats or something? Okay. It's that's weird. It's some kind of cover. I'm not sure what kind of cover, but it is some kind of cover. All right, guys, I think we've uh I think we've covered this one. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Next on my list, right next to the Audi, a 2019 Honda Civic SI. I have always loved these. I, okay, let me tell you what I really love. Back in the day, long, long ago, I had an infatuation with Honda Prelude SIs. I had a few of them, and one of them I even changed the transmission on by myself. First transmission I'd ever done. I was probably in my late teens, I'd guess around 19 years old. And I had to buy the transmission from a junkyard. And I swapped it out in my front yard in just a couple hours. Super easy car to work on. And I loved my Preludes, man. Stick shift Preludes all day long. I've always wanted one with four wheel steering, but this isn't a Prelude, this is a Civic, but it's an SI and it just kind of jogged my memory. 30,900 and something miles on the odometer. It's got a very, very shiny metallic pearlescent white paint job. Looks good other than you guessed it, hail damage. Now, you guys know bright colors are my favorite when it comes to hail damage cars because uh, it, it, you see the least on a, on a very shiny white car. This one's got it all over the, the roof. Of course, the trunk, all of this is just covered in hail. The quarter, this side is, it's hammered pretty good. These were big hail uh, stones, guys. These were pretty big. Uh, now again, you know, you can replace the hood, you can replace the trunk, you could replace the doors, the fender, <laughs> the fender has no hail, it must be plastic? No, it's got hail right there, I just missed it, and right there, yeah, uh, I think some of the worst of it though is right here, I mean, this is, this is just real bad, guys, it's real bad. Now, if you don't mind the hail damage, well, here you go, you can get this car at a huge discount over what you'd be paying for the same car at retail. The interior so far looks pretty good. It smells decent. Oh, it's a stick shift too. It's a stick shift too. Okay. Oh, I love those bolstered seats. This is nice, guys. This is really nice. Let's hop in. Ugh. All right. That is a doornail. Yeah, that's great. Only 30,000 miles. It's got carbon fiber accents. Very, very nice. Let's peek under the hood. Let's see what a current generation SI is working with. Been a while since I've been under the hood of one of these. Yeah, about 20 years. Uh, Earth Dreams Technology turbo okay hey whatever you want to call it man whatever you want to call it it's fine with me let me go grab my booster pack let's fire this bad boy up all right we got the booster pack on it let's see if it runs i guarantee it's gonna run just fine oh that was uh that's john over there he was telling me uh oh yeah she fired right up John was telling me that uh, they're going to be having an, ex an extra auction, like weekly. They're starting two auctions a week out here in Oklahoma City. Drive carefully, systems initializing. It said there was a suspension problem. That may just be from having a dead battery. I, I would find it very difficult to believe that a 2019 Honda with 30,000 miles has suspension issues. Uh, this must have like some sort of active handling or something like that, active suspension. I can tell you this, the shifter feels great. Except, let's see, one, hold on. One, two, three, four. Why was it? One, two, three, four. Reverse. 
Okay, five and six are a little, uh, that's a little difficult to find for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then over and down is reverse. Got it. Got it. Okay. The system has lost power. Push and hold the power button to enable system. All right. It sounds pretty good, don't it? I kind of like this car, guys. <laughs> kind of like this one. I don't give a damn about hail damage. Don't care. Oh, there's your mirror caps. Are they broken? No, they still have their tabs, too. Well, hold on a minute. This one may be broken. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I could fix that with some super glue. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not picky. I'm not picky. It doesn't take much to impress me. And I like this little car. I do. It sounds pretty damn mean. All right, the passenger side is really ugly. I think the passenger side is very, very ugly. Listen to her. Honestly, it, this does sound like a sewing machine. You know, I remember back in the day, oh, it runs like a sewing machine. Okay, that just meant that it ran really smooth and it ran really well, but now it, it actually runs like a sewing machine. It literally sounds like a sewing machine. You can hear that needle going, right? All right. This is a good one. And I wouldn't expect anything less from a low mileage, newer model Honda. Would you? I don't know, guys. You know me. I don't spend money on cars like this. I'm too cheap for a car like this. Yeah, it still says suspension system and oh, drive carefully systems are still initializing. So I guess for that suspension error, you would actually have to just go drive it. That's all that's all there is to it. You just have to go uh, you have to go drive it around and then that would probably clear up the suspension issue. There we go. That back brake was frozen up. The right rear brake, passenger rear brake was frozen. It didn't want to move. Okay, well. There we go. I'm going to let this thing sit here and run for a minute. Because it's the right thing to do. Uh, I'm going to try to charge up that battery so the next person comes out here to start it. Doesn't need to worry about a jump pack. It doesn't need to worry about having to go up there and ask them for help. We'll just go ahead and let this thing charge up for the next guy, and then we will move on to the next one. Next on my list is a Hyundai Elantra. Why? Why? Why not, man? It is a cheap, low miles. I think it's a low. I think it says it's got 57,000 miles on it. If that's the case, it is a cheap, low mileage Hyundai that'll probably outlast a lot of other cars on the road today, I'll tell you that. Um, hail damage again. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're not going to stick with hail damage today. At least I'm going to try to get away from it here in a minute. Back window is gone, but it looks like they did a really good job of taping it up. Okay, so uh, it needs a back window. At this point, on a car like this, I wouldn't even bother with hail damage, guys. On a very nice, newer car that's worth money, that's different. I would definitely try to get as much hail damage repaired as possible. On something like this, I just wouldn't mess with it. And please, in the comments section, I'm not bashing on Hyundai or anything like that, guys. I've had plenty of Hyundais in my day, and I'm here to tell you they are great cars. Hyundai and Kia are great cars. I love them. But I don't think this car would be worth the cost to actually repair it. Uh, even for an individual, it just wouldn't be worth it for me. Now, the interior looks to be in really nice condition. Somebody already cleaned up the majority of the glass, which is nice. There's still some work to be done, but it looks nice. Okay, you've got that leather interior. Yes, that's, that's a pretty rare option on a Hyundai uh, Elantra. I can tell you that right now. It's a six-speed manual. Also fairly rare, guys. This is actually a pretty unique car. Um, I've had a lot of these. I have never had one in a stick shift. You got a reverse lockout right here. There's a button. Very nice. 
Yep, you can't accidentally shift because you got to have that reverse lockout pushed in. It's got power. It's also push to start. Okay. That was not expected. It doesn't want to run. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. Uh, she does not want to run. Wow. 57,000 miles and it doesn't want to run. It's been sitting here for four months. Come on, come on, come on, come on. She's running. There it goes. There it goes. Hey, <laughs> she's back. She's back. We saved it, man. We saved it. She wasn't going to run. She was not having it. She was not feeling it at all. Um, one of the things I noticed about this car is you get down here and there's this knob that says Alpine. Well, that generally tells you there's a, there's a sub back there with an amp. Okay, interesting. I'm sure it goes into gear. Yeah, brakes were locked up on this one too, of course. Okay. Let's go check the trunk. That's what I'm curious about. I want to know right now if there's a uh, if there's a sub in the trunk here. Let's turn that radio down before we end up getting ourselves into some kind of trouble that we can't get out of. Can we see into the trunk? Uh oh. There we go. Ah, they took it. They took it. Yeah, that's not surprising. Got a little bit of mold back here, too. Water's gotten in here. There's broken glass. Uh, no spare tire, but there are jumper cables, and there is your little air up thing, but there is mold back here a little bit. Not too bad, though. Nothing that can't be taken care of. The tires, you know, they're okay on the back, anyway. The fronts look... The fronts are actually pretty chewed up. These are uh, Eagle Sports. Those are good years, right? Pretty sure those are good years. Yeah, good year. Okay, so she really does need some tires. She's banged up a little bit. So, you know, this car to me is a great commuter car. Just a really, really good commuter car. Great gas mileage, manual transmission. A fun commuter car. It'd be a little bit of fun. Yeah, okay. What year is this car? I didn't even check that. Uh, it's a 14 Elantra SE. It's fairly loaded, man. I mean, it's got nice alloys. They're not steel wheels. It's got the leather interior. Uh, power everything, of course. Look at all the buttons here. You've got uh, uh, hands-free calling. You got your trip and everything here, cruise control. This is a this is a fairly well optioned car. Heated seats as well. I'm here to tell you, man, for a 14 Elantra, this thing is decked out pretty damn good. Oh, and let's not forget the sunroof. Yeah, sunroof too, with a six-speed manual transmission. And the clutch really does feel great, guys. Excellent clutch. Excellent clutch. This is a good car. It's a real good car. Air conditioning works. The important window works. Yep, so does that one. All right, well, this one fired right up on its own. Let's see if it wants to start up again for us. Here we go, one more time. Yeah, she fires right up now. I'm guessing she just hadn't been running a while, guys. She just hadn't been running a while. She just needed somebody to get out here and kind of convince her that she's gonna run. All right. Another one down. Let's, uh, well, hi there, you sexy ram. Let's move on to something else. All right, I made you guys wait long enough. An 84 
Lincoln, what is it, a, a town car or Mark 16 or whatever the hell it is. This is a signature series, man. And it's in this beautiful gold color. This is honestly, I really like this. I do, it needs a headliner, desperately. The vinyl top is, act, or sorry, it's called, is it Landau top? is in very good condition. The car overall is in really good looking condition. Beautiful white walls. You still have your bumper inserts there. Those are usually rotted away. It's missing a signal cover over here, a lens cover, no big deal. Still got the pinstriping. It's not hail damaged, okay? It's not hail damaged and it's not wrecked. So I think this would clean up very, very nicely. I really do. I think a good detail on this would make a world of difference. She is a little dirty, but the interior, look how comfortable, comfortable that looks. Look at that. The headliner, as I said, you know, needs a little bit of attention. Look at this. Look at your ashtray. Oh man, it's even got a hidden key in there. I don't know what that key goes to, but there's a hidden key. You got a cigarette lighter with an ashtray. You just don't get this these days. You just don't get this type of luxury these days. Wait a minute. Uh-oh, the door, I did that in the door pin. Oh, oh boy. I did that and the whole damn door panel tried to fall off. Okay, well, you know, eh, it is what it is. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. Looks like the rest of the door panels are secured properly. Okay. She really does need a, need a hell of a, a detail. She's pretty dirty, but this is like, this is super soft shag carpet. Oh man, that's nice. There's your door lock and unlock another ashtray. <laughs> Yet another one. Okay, your seat controls, power locks, rear tilt, power seats on the passenger side. Lincoln Town Car, baby. We got our books, are you kidding me? 84 Town Car, Sears Tire Guide. Wow. I'm betting she doesn't have power. Betting she doesn't have power. And I'll bet also what's under the hood of this monster is probably a little 5.0. <laughs> it's probably this, this little bitty five liter. And she's probably got a dead battery. No, I hear it. I actually hear it dinging. It's dinging. A little bit of a rip there. You know, no big deal. It's an old car, guys. I don't think anybody's going to expect perfection. It is dinging. We've got custom bees on the dash. Look at this old school climate control here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let's put the key in, man. It's... It's making some deep, lots of keys. Holy crap, look at all these keys. Jeez, somebody had a lot of keys to this car. Yeah? No. No, I think the battery's low is what it is. Look at this old school Ford premium AM FM cassette radio. Whew. Wow, adjustable bass and treble. No way, man. No way. Ugh. It's a little grimy, guys. I touched the steering wheel. Now my hand feels icky. Ugh. All right. Some weird pinstriping going down the center of the hood. Probably could have done without that. Oh, goodness gracious. I need a hand. All right, so the hood struts on this are no good. I'm really surprised a big heavy hood like this utilizes hood struts, but it does. So it's heavy as heck. Look, it indented my hand. <laughs> it was a bear to get this, but the battery had 6.6 .6 volts in it. Now it's got 11.8, so it should be enough to fire it up. And as expected, it is a 5.0 liter. Yep, it is. It's listed as a run and drive. So, uh, you know, let's find out if it actually runs and drives. You ready? Here we go. Yes, it does. It fired right up. Wow. That is impressive. Now, my question is, is, is this carbureted or is this fuel injected? 
Oh my goodness. What happened here? Uh, oh wow. There's, there's something in there. What is that? Okay. I, I'm gonna guess a catalytic converter got burned up and blew right through the exhaust. That's my guess. All right, well, hey. She runs good, guys. I'm thinking this might be carbureted. The idle's a little high. There we go, it kicked down. Yeah, I'd almost, I'd almost put money on it. This is a carbureted car. Oh, look at this. The cigarette lighter in the ashtray. What is this? A button? What about the radio? Let's turn the power on. Uh-oh. Including the phone when you speak. It works. And anxious heart. Hear the calm for my anxious. It works. It doesn't work well, but it works. She seems to have pretty decent power. Power steering works. A little. It, it winds a tad bit, but... Oh, I love it. I love it. I guess my next question is, does the important window work? Yeah, my phone's ringing. Oh, wow. Look at the little wing window. Look at this. Oh, dude. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's, I guess the wing window goes down first. Okay. No kidding. I mean, it's a little slow, but it works. That is so cool. That is so cool. Okay, air conditioning. We got the AC on panel and I've got it all the way over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume the AC probably doesn't work, but we'll give it an opportunity. We'll give her a chance. It runs so well. Oh, oh, hold on. Do you hear that? Brakes go to the floor. Yeah, I don't think we got any brakes at all. No, I don't feel any brakes. Air conditioning is going to be a no-go, but I think we all could have figured that one out. Yeah, well, it's a run and drive. I don't trust it. Put the e-brake on. Oh. It doesn't go into gear. It doesn't go into any gear. Okay. I got the e-brake on. It's not shifting. No. There's no transmission, guys. And the e-brake, even though I put the e-brake on, it still... It tries to... No, see, I'm in reverse. And we got nothing. This is neutral. Drive. As soon as I put it in drive, the e-brake pops. I'm holding it with my foot. There's nothing. There's no gears. Nope. No gears at all. Dang, man. I was really rooting for the old girl, too. I really was. Fire it up again. It sure does run well, though. It sure does. <sighs> well, guys, 
unfortunately. You know me, I am always on the hunt for the best deals or something really unique. And I think we found something pretty unique. You don't see these very often anymore. I would have drove the hell out of it. 100% would have driven the living crap out of this car. Uh, but it's not such a bargain if the transmission doesn't work. And I think this thing has a buy it now of like $2,800. Obviously, I'm not paying $2,800 for this, even if it did go into gear and move forwards and backwards. That's just never going to happen. I'm not paying $2,800 for it. Um, but I am always out here searching for a good deal. If this had gone into gear, I would have said this would have been a great deal if we could have got it for $800 or something. Uh, unfortunately, with the transmission not engaging, no brakes at all. Um, nah, we're gonna have to pass on this. Last on my list, guys, the last of a breed, man. The Chevy Impala. I miss it. I do. I was really upset when I heard that GM was killing it off, man. I have always loved these big, beefy, roomy Impalas. This is a 2014 Impala and it's got hail damage and she's got some miles on her too 138,000 miles the tires are i move <laughs> i move tires and uh this one says sail un sail un yeah I, I don't know i don't know the hail damage is extreme on this this is not one you're gonna fix guys i mean I don't want to tell you what you're going to do. You could fix it, sure. This is not one I would fix. She is just, uh, she's too far gone, man. Of course, you know, the typical, yeah, just replace the hood, the trunk. Okay, the roof, that's beyond PDR. Uh, the sail panel's beyond PDR. Like, this, it's just, it's so far gone. Now, what you could do, if you wanted to take a shortcut that's not going to last long, you could just skim coat it, right? You could fill it in, sand it, skim coat it, and sand it again and you know the roof would probably look good in fact you could probably do the majority of the car that way and you know it would look you could repaint it and it would look great for how long i don't know a year two years you can make the car look really really good again and you could probably make a pretty good flip off of it but you know that's not how i do things so i wouldn't buy this car and then have somebody you know fill in the dings uh, and, and then repaint it and then sell it to an unsuspecting customer so that in a year or two uh, the bondo and everything starts peeling off and then they're stuck with a, a really horrible looking car I, I wouldn't do that no rather i'd rather not get involved with that at all i still like the car though it could still be a great car for somebody because of how severe the hail damage is because of how dirty it is and the tires and uh, the paint wasn't good to begin with it looks like someone sanded it with cat litter uh the paint is in pretty rough condition anyway you could probably get this at a pretty good deal fired right up i got my gangster lean going so hold on a second let me uh let me try to adjust this seat to where I'm not laying in the back seat here. I don't, uh, I don't enjoy that. I don't, I don't enjoy laying in the back seat when I'm driving. I like to actually sit up and, and see what I'm doing here. There we go. I got my seat adjusted. Nice center stack here. It runs well. Uh, we have a TPMS light on it fired up without a jump start. It says that we have a, a, a tire flat zero PSI in the right rear. I'm going to say that is incorrect and it's just a bad TPMS sensor. Again, that's not a big deal. Air conditioning, dual zone climate control, of course. Let's put it in gear. Okay, it goes into gear. There we go. She moves. It might, ha it might actually have a flat tire, guys. Yeah, it kind of feels like it does have a flat tire. That may be accurate. You've got your uh, wireless charging right here. That's really nice, right? She runs well. Tell me this is a V6. Okay. Tell me this is a V6. Oh, we've got seeds and sticks in the door panel there. <laughs> seeds and sticks in the door panel okay important window works you might want to you might want to get this car professionally detailed guys <laughs> like get this thing really 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 professionally detailed 
All right, there you go. I was hoping it wasn't some four banger in this thing, and it's not. It's not. It's it's got the V6, probably 3.6 liter, maybe a 3.9, but I'm betting a 3.6. And emissions label says it is a 3.6. All right, let's check the trunk and let's check this tire over here that it claims is flat. Well, there is a donut sitting out there. So yeah, it might actually have a flat. It does, it does. Uh-oh, I missed that somehow. Uh, it's not 100% flat, it looks flat, but it's still got some air in it. It'll probably air back up. Yeah, this one is rough, guys. And this is an LTZ. Okay, so this thing is like loaded to the T. You got one clicker. I mean, it runs good. It runs good. Just bring an air compressor with you, air that tire up before you go driving off. You got your sunroof, and it's got that panoramic roof back there. You probably ain't gonna be able to see it, but it does have that large panoramic roof. This is a decent car, guys. It's, uh, it's, I don't really want to call it a beater. It's, it's not a beater. It's a newer, very slick looking car, but that hail damage, and you guys probably can't see the paint. I don't know what happened to the paint. It really looks like somebody sanded it with cat litter. I mean, it, it's bad, and the roof is the same way. She's just, uh, she's pretty rough. She's pretty rough. All right. That's the end of this video. I'm going to get out of here, guys. If you enjoyed the content, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button and drop those comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Links to everything down below. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon in the next one.